Luke Cage, episode 8, blowing up the spot. Really love this episode because it was a really crazy one. We got some really good revelations, a very surprising one. We did officially meet Diamondback, which, as I said, I wasn't sure that was actually going to happen. We find out that <clears throat> he's the one who's the sniper, and not only is he the shooter and he's also Diamondback, he's also Luke Cage's brother, which I figured because of how they, they played it at the end, um, because he, you know, like, when he was talking to, um, Misty, he was like, oh, I, um, they were, my, my father used to be a preacher, I was like, that's his brother, and stuff, and, you know, they know each other's names, and then as it continued on, it was like, okay, you know, they used to be, you know, really good friends, I guess, and I was like, maybe they weren't actually brothers, maybe they were raised, you know, they were raised together, so they were like brothers, but they weren't really brothers, and I was like, okay, that makes a lot of sense, and then... Luke is like, you know, I loved you like a brother, and he's like, I am your brother, and I'm like, that's the craziest, and like, it, it, like, they must have, he must have assumed that they had different, maybe they did have different parents, maybe like, you know, they're half-brothers, or something like that, and he just never realized it, and maybe that's a part of the reason why his father always liked Luke more than he liked um, Willis, or Diamondback, or Stryker, because he said, I'm assuming his name is Willis, like, William Stryker, or Willis Stryker, maybe not w William Stryker, because that's an actual character, but Willis Stryker, um, but I thought that was really interesting, the way they played it, because I was like, oh, they're brothers, and it's like, oh, no, they were just kind of raised as brothers, they were just very close, and then it's a revelation that they are brothers, even to Luke Cage, it's a revelation, so I was like, okay, something about that is a, you know, a mystery to him. And then they kind of throw in, you know, their backstory just a little bit. We get like a taste of it. So we still have like this new mystery. And it turns out that the person that actually framed Luke was Diamondback, which I never would have expected. I figured it was, you know, with him being a cop, I just assumed it was like other cops where it's like they did something bad. And so, you know, they were like, oh, we need someone to blame and, let, you know, let's blame him. So he was the one that actually set him up in the you know, experiments and stuff, as he mentioned, was that was kind of all on him. And they, you know, we get the little bit of backstory where it's like, okay, Luke should have stood up for Diamondback at some point in the past, but he didn't. And because of that, Diamondback, I'm assuming, you know, went to jail for a while. So I thought that was really interesting. It was like he felt, you know, Diamondback felt betrayed this whole time. And that also explains why he, you know, there was a plan, like this is, there's a certain plan for Luke Cage that, you know, that they have because Diamondback himself has a vendetta against Luke or, you know, as Carl as he kept calling him. So I thought that was very interesting. It was really fun to watch um, Luke actually be wounded this whole episode and they give the explanation about his superpowers and stuff where, you know, his internal organs aren't exactly, you know, impenetrable, but because the bullet was so special with it drilling into him, and it does actually explode. I thought it was like something would happen where they explain it, but it actually did explode. Excuse me. It was just that, like his soft tissue kind of protected him, and you know the the soft tissue around his organs actually protected him. But they did actually get just beneath him, and because of that, they're actually getting closer to his actual organs without him being able to heal because the soft tissue is protecting his organs still. But his, the rest of his body doesn't realize, like, oh, we need to push this out instead of keep it within. So he's in a real messed up situation where his superpowers are the same reason, you know, that he can't actually heal. Because his internal organs aren't impenetrable. It's specifically his skin. Like, it's that, that one organ is impenetrable. It's like his skin. But all his other organs are still very vulnerable. So I don't know how this is going to play out. Especially now that he's been shot. I feel like something's going to happen. You know, of course, he'll be taken. I would assume they'd find out unless that was, like, the very last stop, which is kind of hard to believe. But unless this was, like, the very last stop for this truck, they're going to see him as they're, you know, put another uh, trash in the back. And I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, like, like Diamondback said, like, you barely survived the first one. He's struggling the whole episode after having been shot in the stomach. And, you know, they're fighting and stuff like that. And Diamondback is actually able to kind of take him on because he's wounded. He keeps, you know, hitting him in the, um, where the bullet wound is. And he actually has a fighting chance against Luke. So, he, Luke's struggling through this whole episode to really even walk. And, you know, by the end of the episode, he's barely making it. And he's just shuffling down the street to who knows where he was going. But 
Diamondback shoots him like you know, and this basically is like right in his collarbone pretty much, and sends him right into the truck. So I don't know how this is supposed to play out. How like I, I'm still trying to guess how in the world he's gonna end up being healed from the shrapnel that hit him in the stomach. You know, ex, you know, and, 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 you know, exploding inside of him, but being stopped like just a little bit, so it doesn't like blow him up. It just boom, it hit the skin and went like right underneath. Um, the impenetrable skin, but because it's, you know, such tiny pieces, it made it through those little, you know, spots, like, uh, Claire was specifying, like, you know, you can pull it apart, but it instantly goes right back together. So, that's how, you know, it pulled it apart for that split second during the explosion, and then it was like, boom, gotcha, and, you know, it, unfortunately, that trapped the bad stuff inside of his body, so... I have no idea, I, I really can't, like, unless Magneto comes in this junk and, like, just rips that stuff out of him, I don't know how the heck he's supposed to get out of this, but I'm excited to see where they take it. Of course, Claire goes through some crap because Misty um, ends up finding them, and she wholeheartedly believes that Luke has, you know, is now the killer. Which I felt like she, you know, she didn't like the whole time. You know, she's going through. Of course, the evidence all does it naturally. It does point to Luke, but she's going through it, and her whole thing in the beginning is like. I don't believe he did it, you know, like, she doesn't know about the secret entrance and all this other crap, so, she, and suddenly, you know, she was too scared to even go up and deliver champagne, but now she's sleeping with the guy as a prostitute, so, you know, I, you know, she's getting this conflict, you know, this conflicting story that just didn't make sense to what she knew, and then by the end of the, end of the episode, she was, like, only looking at the evidence, mostly, it seemed like mostly because Luke wasn't doing what she wanted him to do, because he was like, I'm not going in, or... You know, I've been shot and this and that. And it seemed like it just kind of pushed her over the edge where she got to a point where it was like, whatever, this is what they say, so this is what it is. That's kind of how it felt to me, where she was still doing her own thing at the beginning. And by the end, it's like all this evidence and stuff. And like, even though she like had just said it, it was like, you know, if you were in that overturned truck, then that's your alibi. And then right after that, it like, you know, they get the evidence and stuff. And so she's like, you know, I'm going to arrest you. And it seemed like that was the turning point. Was like, because they found some fake gloves with, um, you know, what's his name's blood on it, which I would assume they could easily find Luke's DNA somewhere, you know, if, especially with him having been in the apartment, be like, oh, well, here's this random thing, just put some, like, follicles in it and poof, you know, his DNA is inside the glove, but I would assume if they checked it, you know, it wouldn't have his DNA in it, I don't think they went that far, I think it was just like, all right, here's some of Kyle Mouse's blood on the glove, and just throw that in the trash. And that's pretty much it. But, like, if they actually did, like, some extra DNA work and be like, oh, none of his DNA is on the inside of this glove, which would be impossible. So, I don't know how that's going to play out with him proving his innocence. Um, you know, like I said, they can't really go to the medic who was in the truck with them, you know, because he, you know, as Claire mentioned, he borrowed the truck himself. So, he technically wasn't even supposed to do that. So, until, you know, like, the two of them come forward and say, hey, we were in this truck that got flipped over, and so this is what happened, he can't just flat out, you know, say it, because he doesn't know what situation they're in, so he won't mention, like, oh, yeah, I was helping Claire and Luke Cage, the superhuman, after he was shot and stuff. So, of course, he won't say that and give them the alibi without knowing what situation they're in. And I assume Claire's gonna try to find Luke. I mean, I guess that's all she can do at this point, because... She doesn't know where he's at. Uh, obviously, Misty doesn't really know what's happening right now. And everything's just really nuts. And Mariah's just kind of playing the game. You know, she she got her alibi and everything. And she and Shades are working together. And she's kind of taking over and becoming more like uh, Mama Mabel. Despite her saying, you know, she's not like her. You know, when looking at the picture and kind of losing her mind. Just like split second, she kind of lost it just talking to that picture. But... I'm excited to see where it goes for this next episode. I don't know, honestly, what to really expect. Um, I was really surprised with the Diamondback thing. I assume that we're going to get more explanation as to why it was a huge surprise to Luke, which, like I said, I, I assume he just thought, like, oh, this is, like, I don't know, just my friend or something. I don't know, maybe because he was younger and, and just the way it played out where Diamondback was older than him and he was younger. He just assumed, like, oh, this is just, like, my buddy from down the road, or they adopted him, or, you know, brought him in so we weren't actually brothers, or something like that. And it's like, no, I am your brother because, if, you know, whatever. Like, our dad, maybe, you know, he had a second family sort of thing, and, you know, I came along at the last minute because I found out he was my dad, or something like that, I don't know. But I am curious to see where they go. 
I'm tr I'm racking my brain trying to figure out how in the world they're gonna make it where he actually survives this. Because like I said, all I can think of is they just have Magneto come in and just boop, gotcha, and he's good to go. But I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna play out. And plus, now he's got two bullets, so he won't really be punching too much either with his right arm. So I'm excited to see where this next episode takes things. Of course, I definitely want to know what you guys thought about this episode, so please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. And I want to know um, what you guys think the true connection is between Diamondback and Luke Cage, because, you know, they have, you know, obviously this big thing where he's the one who set Luke up to go to prison and, you know, go through all the crap. What could he have done? You know, like, what could Luke have done that was such a big deal? that Diamondback had like this whole thing to destroy his life afterwards and you know now that he's found him he you know actually wants to kill him because for a second um honestly for a split second I thought that that dude was gonna end up being like his dad or something where it was like he found his son and he was like this crazy criminal or something I, I don't know I was just trying to figure out who this guy was that knew him but you know I mean Diamondback going to jail for a little bit I guess that was his thing it was like you know he let me down he I, I don't know, I, I feel like maybe he just didn't take the blame for something, and, and, you know, but even Luke said, like, you know, I could have been a better friend, but I wasn't, and maybe he just got out of, like, that crappy lifestyle, maybe his dad convinced him, you know, don't be in this crappy lifestyle, like he said, that's kind of all his dad wanted to do, is not raise a black criminal, so maybe he just left that lifestyle, and kind of left him behind, and left that, you know, left that lifestyle behind, and that's, you know, when Diamondback got busted, he didn't have his, you know, his right-hand man there with him, and something bad happened, you know, right after Luke left, because he didn't have someone watching out for him, or, you know, backing him up in a fight, or something random like that, and that's how Diamondback ended up getting caught, so, I feel like that might be how it plays out, um, I'm just, in general, very excited to see, I don't know if it'll happen in the next episode or what, but I'm so curious how in the world he's gonna get this shrapnel out of his body, with his own body, like, keeping it trapped within, so... I don't know what to expect there, but I'm excited for it. Like I said, I want to know what you guys think about the connection between uh, Diamondback and Luke. You know, how Luke didn't know that they were actually brothers, what exactly happened, you know, in their past to make Diamondback kind of go nuts and have this crazy revenge plot and everything. And of course, I want to know what you guys thought about the episode in general, so please comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.